What's up YouTube, it's Monkey DN back at you with another video and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 strongest warlords in One Piece. Keep in mind this list is my opinion so if you have a different list put in the comments down below I will be reading through all the comments. Before we get started I want to include an honorable mention we're going to be talking about Buggy D Clown. Uh, clearly one of the greatest pirates in One Piece, one of the greatest characters in general. I'm not going to be including him on this list because he's clearly a cut above the rest of the characters. He, he's infamous captain of the Buggy Pirates. He was one of the legendary pirates aboard Goldie Roger's ship. He was like a brother to one of the Yonkos, Red Hair Shanks. And he was, he was also the mastermind behind one of the largest prison breakouts in One Piece history. And that's complete facts by the way. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started with the top 10 list. Coming in at number 10, we got Sir Crocodile. This man, he was basically the first major challenge to Luffy in the Grand Line. He ate the Sand Sand Fruit, which is a very powerful Logia Devil Fruit. But to be honest, we're going to be ranking him at last place because Luffy, pre-time skip, like in the beginning of the series, was able to defeat Crocodile. I mean, he did lose two times before he finally got the W, but come on, Crocodile losing to a pre-time skip Luffy without even gear second, gear third, that's gonna put you pretty low on his list. In the Marine 4 arc, we do see Crocodile clashing with the Flamingo, and he even thinks that he could hang with him for a second, but clearly he can't, and it's more so of ignorance and cockiness, but I don't have to put Crocodile at number 10. Coming at number 9, we got Gecko Moria. To be honest, this character is a very tough character to rank because in his prime, he would honestly have been one of the strongest characters or one of the stronger characters on this list, but he didn't train for a decade and was still able to hang with Luffy in Gear 2 and even Gear 3. Luffy was only able to fight against him because he ate all the shadows and was able to transform into Nightmare Luffy, so he was able to throw hands for a little bit. Apparently, Go Gekko Moria was also clashing with Kaido before he got his whole entire crew killed, and this basically like broke his spirit, so he just went back to Paradise, which is the Grand Line, and chilled out, got a little lazy, let his zombies do everything for him, could let his zombie make him a drink, or you know, he just kind of like relaxed and chilled. So he could potentially be higher if he was training and didn't have his heart broken, or not his heart broken, but his spirit broken. So that's why I'm placing him at number nine. Coming in at number eight, we got Jinbei, one of the best fishmen pirates of all time and now he's part of the straw hat pirates he's a master of fishman karate let's just talk about his feats he was on par with ace while fighting on land and in marine form he defeated moria relatively easily actually he just put some water on the zombies and just like boom he defeated jimbe as one punch basically um he was able to hold akainu off for a few moments which is a pretty great feat considering that akainu is one of the strongest admirals of all time and he was able to block some of his punches i mean he still got burnt and got his stomach burnt pretty badly but if he was in the water i would put him up maybe a little higher in this list but i'm not going to include that because it's not really fair i mean to be honest even if he was in the water i'm not gonna say he's the strongest character he might be able to beat devil fruit users but we've seen zoro underwater beat hody relatively easily so it's not to say that people can't beat fishman in the water but Jinbei definitely has that advantage, and he's very powerful and very strong, and that's why I'm putting him at number 8. Coming at number 7, we got Kuma, Bartholomew Kuma. His powers are absolutely broken. He can teleport, deflect anything, and he, spe he speed blitz Rayleigh and Sabaody. He can send people flying across the world effortlessly. If he really wanted to, like this is just a theory, like if he wanted to, he could defeat almost any character including Kaido like I feel like there's no reason why he couldn't just teleport to, to, to Wano then just slap Kaido in the face when he doesn't realize it and Kaido gets teleported to the water or something you know I, I don't know I don't want to I don't want to say nothing but I feel like he could do that I feel like there's a reason why they nerfed Kuma into a brainless robot it's just it's just because this man is too OP I feel like that's why Oda did that I mean he still did play a huge role obviously in saving the straw hats and showing how strong the world really is and that's why I love Kuma's character. Coming at number 6, we got Trafalgar D. Water Law. 
And just like Kuma, he has one of the most hacked devil fruits in One Piece. He sliced an entire mountain in half. He was able to move enemies wherever he wants. He was able to squish people's bodies. He has various attacks where he can lead people to instant death. If it wasn't for uh, Doflamingo's ability to heal his own organs, the Gamma Knife that he used against him would have destroyed Doflamingo. He was able to throw hands with Doflamingo a little bit and he beat Smoker relatively easy and even Vergo relatively easily. So now I have to put Trafalgar Law above Kuma and I'm, I'm to be honest with you guys, Trafalgar Law will probably be even higher on this list by the end of the series. Given that he survives Wano, I'm hoping he does, but there's been a lot of theories going around that he might die. But let's not get into that. that that's a whole entire topic for another video. Coming in at number 5, we got Boa Hancock. We haven't really seen much of her, and we know that she uses Conqueror's Hockey, although we haven't really seen her use it. Pre time skip, she was casually destroying pacifistas at Marine Ford with one kick each. And keep in mind, these pacifistas are not to be underestimated. Even one of these pacifistas were was too much for all the straw hats combined pre time skip. And I'm just gonna assume that after the, the two year time skip that she's she got them stronger. Her devil fruit is also pretty hacks if you think about it. Like she could basically turn anyone to stone. And that's, that, that's pretty OP. This isn't canon, but Oda did take part in the idea of One Piece Stampede. So when Luffy got hurt by Bullet, she like speed blitz a giant mechanoid being and was able to actually kick it and damage Douglas Bullet. And even Luffy in Gear Force wasn't really able to lay much of a finger on him in the beginning of the fight. So that's, 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 a, that's a major plus right there. Coming in at number 4, we got Don Quixote do Flamingo. In terms of strength, he's definitely top commander level, maybe low admiral tier level if you like really hype him up, but we see him make easy work with the vice admirals and was strong enough to even stop Jozu in the Marine 4 war. And Jozu is one of the one of the commanders of the White Peter Pyres. And the only person who was able to break out of his string manipulation was Luffy that we've seen. So his string is very overpowered. He was able to take on Law and manhandle him. And keep in mind, this is Law after he took out Smoker and Virgo relatively easily and after the two-year time skip. He was able to give Luffy in Gear 4 a tough time. Even after getting Gamma Knifed and taking a Red Hawk to the organs, Law and Luffy combined like damaging him as much as possible and then Luffy gear forth going against him. He was able to hold for a little bit and he uses awakening to fight against Luffy. So Doflamingo at number four, I, I think this is a this is a strong spot. Coming in at number three, this might be controversial, but I'm gonna have to put Edward Weevil. We don't really know how strong he is, but he is a self-proclaimed son of Whitebeard and no one can confirm whether this is true or not. We don't know how strong he is, but Admiral Kizuru did say that he reminds him of Whitebeard in his prime. Whitebeard in his prime, guys. That that's a pretty that's that's an insane feat right there. But we we're not sure if that's true or not. But that's what Kizuru claims. Uh, some feats that he has actually done is he destroyed 16 pirate crews that were allied with Whitebeard all by himself. And I just want to put that into perspective because. Kuma, when protecting the Thousand Sunny for two years, was completely destroyed, barely alive, he was still able to do it, but Weevil destroyed these 16 pirate crews by himself, and he didn't even seem like he got a scratch on him, so I feel like Oda is really trying to hype him up in some type of way, and maybe he's going to have a huge role in the future, which I'm sure he is, because I feel like, why would they introduce someone like the self-proclaimed son of Edward, uh, of Edward Newgate for no reason? I feel like he's going to have a huge role, and I'm very excited to see what Oda has in store for him. Coming in at number 2, we got Mihawk. This man is a beast. This man is the renowned world's greatest swordsman. People say that we haven't seen much of him, but to be honest, we actually have seen a lot of him. He defeated Jinbei in Marine Ford effortlessly, and he just used like, he didn't even like slash him with a sword. He just used the shockwave of the sword to beat him. He slashed the ice that Akuiji made from, from freezing the, um, the tsunami. Uh, he slashed it in half effortlessly when he wasn't even trying to slash it. He was slashing Luffy and just Luffy dodged and the, just the shockwave split that thing ice into to shitterines. He wanted to test his strength against Whitebeard and sent, one of, sent an unnamed slash to him. And this unnamed slash was deflected by Jozu. I mean, Jozu is really strong, but he seemed like he was struggling to even stop that one slash that Mihawk did. And keep in mind, this man is the 4th Division commander of the Whitebeard crew. And was in his diamond form, okay? He's literally going against, he's slashing against diamond. And 
Another feat uh, is that he was one of the rivals to one of the four emperors, Shanks. And even though, like after they met after a long time, Mihawk didn't want to fight against Shanks because he lost an arm and said that it wouldn't really be a fair fight. So I'm not going to say that Mihawk is stronger than Shanks. I ain't saying the Shanks is stronger than Mihawks, but I'm just going to say that they're on the same level at least. I'm going to say he's above Admiral level, maybe even Yonko level in strength. At the number one spot, it would obviously usually go to Buggy D Clown, but we're not, like I said, he's an honorable mention. At number one, we're going with Blackbeard, Marshall D Teach. I believe he's the weakest of the Yonko right now. Obviously, by the end of the series, he will be the strongest character to ever live in One Piece world. He has two of the strongest Devil Fruits, the Dark Dark, Logia Fruit, and the Quake Quake Fruit. We've seen what Whitebeard is capable of with the Quake Quake Fruit. And after the two-year time skip, I'm sure that Blackbeard has trained a lot with it and maybe even mastered the Quake Quake Fruit. He was able to defeat Ace pre-time skip with just his Darkness Fruit. And keep in mind that Ace was a second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, so that's a big feat right there. Apparently, he scarred Shanks in the eyes when he was on guard. I mean, there's not really much to go off of that. It could have been like an underhanded way. We're not too sure, but that's, that's a Yonko you're talking about. Luffy's never even like scratched a Yonko yet. And Blackbeard was able to hurt Shanks. Like, I don't even know if he hurt it, but he scratched his eyes. So that's, that's saying something. Blackbeard is most likely the main villain in One Piece. Uh, the narrative is most likely that he was going to be the strongest character by the end of this series in One Piece. And right now, we haven't really seen him use hockey yet, but I'm sure he does use hockey. And we're not sure if he uses Conquers or anything, but his Devil Fruits, very powerful. And that's why I'm putting him at the number one spot. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. The support will mean a lot to me. If you guys enjoy One Piece content, also leave a subscribe button. Also click that subscribe button because... I, I, I love One Piece and you should love One Piece too, so that's why we all do this together. Anyway, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Peace out.